All right, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Uh, I am Nautical Squatch. Welcome to the Squatch, Squatch Arena here. Uh, again, this is this is uh, a little excerpt from my game, The Horde, uh, the demo of it, and uh, I, re I really want to go over something that was a big deal for me when making this, and I'm sure you guys have run into it. That's probably why you clicked on this, but it's frame rate. Uh, now, frame rate. Uh, big pain in the butt, uh, a, a real, a real difficult thing to try to maneuver, especially for a game like this, uh, a wave survival thing. Now, the tips I'm going to go over on this, is it'll be real quick, and obviously they'll be applicable to a bunch of different types of games, uh, not just wave survival games, but uh, some of the stuff, you know, I learned making this kind of game. So, um, number one, I, I have a few tips here, now let's just get into it. Number one. Uh, the main thing you want to do, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually leave the gameplay to go into the edit mode to give you an idea. Let's let's rewind a little bit. <clears throat> See how that happened down here in the thermal? Went down six percent. Now, obviously, I have the things are changing. It's not as dynamic, but that's something to keep in mind. Uh, the, the first thing is, uh, my, my tip would be to keep an eye on your thermal and give yourself a lot of thermal headroom, specifically with gameplay memory. Gameplay memory is what is going to uh, uh, change uh, while you're playing the game. While a person is playing your game, what's going to vary more than the other two is going to be the gameplay memory. So it's important when you're constructing your map, like I've done here, to keep that in mind and to not undervalue that because this is going to vary. It's going to go up and it's going to go down and you're going to want to put in animations. You're going to want to put in explosions and all this other stuff. And even playing things like playing music, playing music alone, it doesn't just affect uh, your audio memory. It really, really, uh, depending on how the music was written, uh, is going to dictate this gameplay memory. So so give yourself a lot of headroom. Here, uh, I have it at 54%, which is uh, plenty of headroom. I mean, that's half the bar. I'd say a good rule of thumb is just to keep uh, at least one third, so like a 66%. Um, uh, gameplay memory as a base so you have some headroom to vary so that, that that's number one and I want to give some a shout out a way I did this uh, that was helpful is using this specific asset here and it's used all around uh, these bricks this stuff uh, it's actually a really good asset because I was able to take the squares from here and, and make ramps and stuff all these ramps are all the same asset so I'm not really um, uh, adding too much to sculpture right I, I'm able to vary that up uh, I just want to give a shout out to uh, the Dino Burgers for Castle Brick Wall One and his his other stuff. So that, that was really helpful. So that's my first tip. Uh, just keep keep thermal headroom uh, uh, in the back of your mind. Uh, the second one, which is a little more complicated, it's it's going to be uh, NPC and enemy variation, and to consider not making them puppets. Now, if you look over here, this is a uh, wave survival. Um, with enemies, I have a UFO enemy like you saw earlier. I have, uh, uh, let me, boom. Uh, I have this little, uh, this little zombie creeper. Uh, I have a giant, which you didn't see in this video, but I have a giant. And I, ha I have a, another type of giant too. Um, <clears throat> he's over, he's over here, um, right here. But uh, the, the thing is, all of those, with the exception of one, are puppets, and that's really what kills your frame rate is having a lot of number one moving objects number two a uh, puppet with a lot of connectors moving objects and then having a baseline uh set of of logic right so every puppet you just throw in the deluxe puppet like you do when you're making a character in this game that impacts a lot of the gameplay especially if you're doing something like this where you want um a massive amount of enemies on screen at one time and for you to be doing damage to them uh, every time you're doing damage, you're taking a hit to the gameplay, and if you're doing a lot of damage at one time, well, your fucking frame rate's gonna drop. So, what you're gonna want to deal with is considering you want to have a lot of enemies, right? You want to increase the difficulty and have fun. Uh, I created this uh, UFO right here, this UFO guy, um, as an enemy, simply because I didn't, I wanted to add more enemies to the screen without uh, dropping frame rate, which I would have done if I had to use a puppet. With this, all this is, I, co I, I coded this, all this is a, is a, uh, um, a follower gadget uh, that does damage if it hovers over your player. So that's what the rest of this stuff is. It's some more stuff. But, I mean, dude, it is a sculpture with a follower on it, and that's it. And that does not do 
nearly, it doesn't even scratch the surface at, uh, in terms of, of frame rate uh, issues that, uh, that an actual puppet like this will do with the moving parts and every, everything. Um, another thing, look at all this red. Let me just get rid of that. We don't need it. Boom, look at these guys. I wanted NPCs in my level. Look at them. They're beautiful. Are they, uh, are they puppets? Well, they were when I dropped them in. I got rid of all the connectors. I took it all out, so it's just a sculpture that is stagnant, that stands still, that doesn't uh, have a big, uh, if any, real effect on the gameplay. And then, once again, look at this. Just a rotator. And when you play the game, they feel uh, pre pretty alive, I mean, for what they are. It's just a head rotator. Look at that. And this is doing no nothing. If these two, think about it like this. I, right now, I have a maximum of, of five enemies on a screen at one time. That's what I'm able to get. That's what we're dealing with as, as uh, when we're making dreams. Uh, that little amount of, of enemies on a screen at one time. Maybe you can get some more. Maybe you can get... Maybe you have to do some less. It depends on your level. But with this level, I'm able to do five enemies while keeping a consistently very high frame rate. Um, and and now I have this kind of these guys looking at you. Uh, I have I'm able to put these uh, these UFOs here in and, and add them in as enemies um, without having to really deal with anything. And it makes you know it makes the game feel more alive and it makes uh, adding that extra enemy makes it more difficult and uh, creates variation in the gameplay. So that, that's another thing. Um, now I will also say uh, my another tip would be to limit the amount of paintings. Paintings are sneaky bastards, man. Uh, obviously this area is all uh, graffitied up, and these are all paintings, and that's fine. But it's not really that much. Where, where you're gonna—that's th not really the issue you're typically run into with dreams with paintings. What you're gonna run into is you're gonna start putting fucking plants everywhere. You're gonna put grass. You're gonna put trees. You're gonna put fucking ferns inside, and that destroys, especially if they're animated, like weaves, uh, uh, leaves blowing in the wind, that destroys your frame rate. Who would have thought? You would have think it's all these sculptures. Nope, it's you throwing in a bunch of uh, moving grass in. And you don't really need to. I mean, one cheap trick, um, is this i mean this is a sculpture none of this none of these are uh these are just a loose paint flex the, this grass here um obviously it's going to change for you whatever your game is but this definitely works here and it's it's a sculpture with loose paint flex um and uh and it's kind of bumpy so it feels like ground feels like feels like grass and i don't have to deal with um the game having to draw a bunch of these paintings and that's going to just decimate the, the frame rate so that that's not to be underestimated really consider taking out of paint uh taking out if you're running into frame rate issues taking out the paintings if you have bushes take them out fuck it uh then uh also go through all your objects here's another tip movable objects kills your frames take out movable objects if you can uh if you need them to move uh do it temporarily you know, games can be dynamic, so if you need, like, an explosion to happen and bricks move, for example, after the bricks move and settle, set a timer uh, to uh, make a, a, a frame that will uh, make sure that the, the, the objects that were movable are no longer movable, and that will actually, that will help the gameplay a lot. Uh, it'll help your frame rates. Um, and then two, uh, two final things. Uh, two final things. I'll, I'll leave you guys alone. Uh, I've been going a little long-winded here, so I just want to make this quick for you. Um, <clears throat> number one uh, is is obviously with this. I mean, I'm using emitters, right? I'm using the emitter gadget to uh, generate these um, these enemies, and that's obviously. I know that goes without saying, but it's worth worth saying anyway. I mean, um, you need to use emitters if you're having a lot of uh, a lot of enemies in this case on your in your dream use an emitter because that means that it, the game really isn't having to deal with a bunch of enemies placed in the dream at one time they just have to deal with spawning the enemies and it, and it, and it helps a lot and you can do that with other objects as well if there's a uh, an object or a thing in your game that is going to be um, coming up a lot right instead of just placing that object and copy and pasting it all in the dream uh, consider using emitters they're, they're really helpful and the final thing, and then, uh, and this might be one of the most important things, is a way to give yourself um, uh, room, room to breathe a little bit, in terms of uh, frames dropping for a little part of the game, and then maybe coming back up. 
and you have music in the background, if you have music every time, and I do mean every time. Let me open this music. Oh, no, nope, not like that. This little snail right here, baby. Look at it. Ignore frame rate. Ignore it. Make sure this is turned on. Okay? So that means I'm playing this game. I'm killing zombies. I'm feeling like a beast. Maybe there's a little too many zombies on the screen at one time. Maybe there's an explosion or there's a dynamic thing that happened to cause a temporary drop in frames. It is much more forgivable if the music keeps going steady and there's a simple drop in frames. Maybe there's a little bit of gameplay glitch. Players won't care. Players won't really notice. They will if the fucking music gets out of time. If you have music in your game, make sure it's ignoring the frame rate because if you happen to drop, which is, you know, like almost guaranteed to happen, the best way to just make it seem like it's still running smoothly and to give the uh, audience an illusion that um, this is a temporary thing and it's going to go back to normal, uh, just make sure that the music is going fucking steady. There is nothing more infuriating when you're playing, right? Then you just, you, the music fucking dropping. You know what you pick up on, you're, we're humans, man. We pick up on that immediately. So make sure that that goddamn snail is glowing. Glowing snails. That's what you want. Okay. Was that good? Did that get you what you wanted? I hope so. I hope so. Games are hard. Frame rate's really hard. Take away the paintings. Take away the, uh, the movable objects. Limit the amount of enemy um, enemies that uh, are puppets. If you have an opportunity to make them not a puppet and just a sculpture and use something like a rotator or a follow gadget to give it an illusion of life, do that. It will save you. Uh, it will pay in dividends doing that. Uh, make sure you have thermal headroom. Design your maps from the bottom, bottom up with that in, 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 in your mind. Uh, reuse your assets. Obviously, that goes without saying, but just reuse the assets. Um, and honestly, once you do that, and, and use emitters wh where you can. So if you do all those things, um, I'm, I'm sure that you, you know, you're an experienced dreamer and you're already doing some of those things. Those are, those are what's going to pay you the most. That's what's going to pay back the most. That's what's going to give you the most bang for your buck and get you the most frames for your fucking game. Because I promise you what you don't want, and take it from me, what you do not want is watching some lovely streamer play your game, and the first thing they says is not the first thing they say when they're playing their game live is not oh this is a cool game but hey where are the frame rates at? There's a frame drop. It's the only thing they think about. If you do these, it will pay. If you do these fucking tips, I promise you, it'll pay off in the end. So thank you so much. Uh, I'll see you on the next one.